Jen, there's been a real um, kind of cottage industry here. Uh, are people being too hard on AOC and Bernie and the squad? Are we being, are we not being good allies as they call it? Or, or um, are, should you call them sellouts? Should you call them frauds? I get grief for not using such language, but I got to tell you, <sighs> I really think there is, you know how like in relationships, sometimes there's a disconnect, you know, one person wants some X and one person wants Z and your wires are being crossed and you feel you're, you're, you know, you're just not being fulfilled in, in what you need. And that person, whether it's a business relationship, a personal relationship, a romantic relationship, whatever, that person told you or presented themselves as X, but they're giving you Y or Z. Terrible analogy, I know. But <laughs> reading this story over the last days, and I know I'm going to be attacked. Uh, you're going too hard or you're making a uh, mountain out of a molehill. But reading this story, let me just show you guys what I'm talking about from Politico, uh, where AOC apparently was basically taking donations that her donors sent and sending it to like, quote unquote, at risk Democrats. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, Democrats in quote unquote swing districts that are generally right wing Democrats. I mean, I'm not going to read the whole story, but as the midterm campaign uh, campaign's first fundraising deadline approached this week, several vulnerable Democrats got an unwelcome surprise in their accounts. Ooh, 5000 from Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, <laughs> the New York Democrat sent the contribution to her colleagues to help keep the House majority ahead of a tough cycle without directly contributing to the Democratic, the D triple C. The D triple C uh, is the, you know, the House campaign arm, uh, which basically said, basically barred any consultants or any ad makers uh, from who worked with AOC or other incumbents, excuse me, challengers to incumbents. Um, so basically to give you the, you know, the, the nuts and bolts, AOC took money that was donated to her from her, you know, her supporters and was routing some of that money to swing district Democrats, such as Connor Lamb in Pennsylvania, um, Alyssa Slotkin. Let me get the, uh, let me make sure I have the names right here. Yeah. Um, you know, some of it went to Katie Porter and some that are more towards the left, but some of it went, you know, AOC's money poses a problem. It went to Democrats such as Congresswoman Jared Golden of Maine, who is pretty conservative, uh, Alyssa Slotkin of Michigan, Connor Lamb of Pennsylvania. Uh, just to give you, if you don't know, Connor Lamb, this is from Jacobin. Perhaps the most glaring is recently reelected Connor Lamb, who has become something of a figurehead for the party's conservatives media campaign against progressives. Despite telling the New York Times last week that, quote, people are not clamoring for single payer health care, Lamb has repeatedly faced pressure from constituents to support such a policy. At a 2019 town hall, he was met with, quote, call after call for a single payer health care or Medicare for all system, according to a local report. So that's Connor Lamb. A few months later, he again braved challenge from irate constituents, many of them the kind of liberal suburbanites not known for typically agitating for left-wing causes, uh, disappointed with Congress's lack of movement on progressive priorities. When a nurse urged him to sign on to Medicare for All, Lamb insisted most people in the district were pretty happy with their insurance. So that's who Connor Lamb is. He also happens to be um, a mother fracker, loves fracking, uh, <laughs> obviously pretty, pretty different uh, than what AOC and most of her donors stand for, I would say. Um, he is against the Green New Deal. I don't even know if he's honestly for a $15 minimum wage. Alyssa Slotkin, again, in Michigan, uh, she's not on board with Medicare for All. I don't think she's on board with the Green New Deal. And before I get to why this is problematic, obviously the devil's advocate position, Jen, is, well, Jordan, it's $5,000. That's nothing. And, you know, maybe if she plays nice and helps these people, 
um, they'll do, you know, they'll return the favor, so to speak, when it's time for, you know, us to challenge or pressure on progressive priorities. And my thought to me, the money is secondary. I mean, I would be pissed off if I donated to AOC. And I think most people that don't donate to AOC Jen are like actual progressives. So I don't yeah. think they probably knew that some of that money might, even if it's $5 would have been rerouted yeah. to conservative Democrats. But yeah. to me, second to the money, Jen, I think this again just shows more and more of the, if you call it a strategy, to me, what is a failed strategy of the progressive left, which is let's try and establish relationships with these corporatists. Let's try and, you know, do, you know, work with them, uh, thinking that if we just send them money or we just work with them or we just try and go out to dinner with them and we just show them outside the window at what people really want, then they'll come closer to our side, which to me basically is a misunderstanding of who these people are. They're corporatists for a reason. They've sold their morals at the front door. They've sold their principles at the front door. Uh, and it, by the way, it has always been a misnomer that, oh, they have to be this way because they're in more swing districts. No, if Connor Lamb ran as AOC, he would win. You got to have charisma and stand for something. He'd probably win in that Pennsylvania district. Alyssa Slotkin, who AOC gave money to, She's in a swing district in Michigan. She'd probably win if she ran on these policies because they're wildly popular. It's just bullshit manufacturing consent. The media makes it seem like these people need to be towards the right to win in these swing, swing districts. But to me, secondary from the money, it just shows what is the left doing? Like, what is your strategy? Is your strategy basically to spend the next 15, 20 years trying to one by one pick off these corporatists to your side? Because if that's the case, we're all going to be dead by the time we get Medicare for all. Your thoughts? Well, wouldn't don't you think that she would say she's not, maybe she's trying to win them over a little bit. Like when you give someone a gift, like psychologically, they, they, and in marketing, like they are more likely to feel indebted to you and like more endeared to you and like do what you want. Like that's a, that's a, um, the psychology of persuasion. That's, that's one of the principles of that. But she would say, I think, no, these people are in risky positions. I'm just trying to help them win because if I don't, then their spot will go to a Republican and isn't that worse. So. Well, but that's not what she campaigned on. Right. Not, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Way, I think that, but I think that's her bullshit answer. Right. And by the way, I'm just picking on AOC because this is the this is the this is the story. I mean, this is the financial transactions. Mm -hmm. It's possible mm -hmm. that money donated to Rokana is going. We don't know. I mean, I would I would need I don't have time right now, but we would I'm sure if we look into it, there are other progressives taking donate donor money and routing it to others. I mean, AOC makes the most out of any of the squad, but uh, you know, to me, we're talking about AOC because this is the one that it came out that she was doing this yeah. donor money. But to me, it's across the board, this entire squad. And let me show uh, Colin's wonderful graphic here. It's the entire um, squad, because at the end of the day, you didn't run on trying to slowly pick off more corporatists to cop on to Medicare for all. You didn't run on, oh, Eureka, we got this corporate Democrat to sign his name onto Medicare for all. Big victory. Uh, we You didn't run necessarily on, like, let's get an exemption to PAYGO. You ran on bringing the ruckus to the Democratic Party. That was what yep. AFP ran on. Rashida Tlaib, who, you know, I like all of these people's policies, but Rashida Tlaib, pretty much the same thing. Uh, Ayanna Presley, eh, she's more on the Elizabeth Warren, uh, you know, wing, I would say, uh, Jamal Bowman, same thing, Corey Bush, who I happen to know, I I've interviewed her in the field. I, I, you know, she was there when I was covering the St. Louis black lives matter protests, uh, years ago when Ty and I was arrested. I, I think she's the real deal. So I'm not like attacking them as bought off. I don't think that's the case, but I am 
strongly criticizing them as A, naive, and B, ineffective. This is an ineffective strategy. Um, Connor Lamb, first of all, that political story, I'm not going to like continue reading the whole thing, but it's not only that giving them the money isn't going to bring them over. They are actively sending the money back. They are actively sending the, the $5,000. Some mm -hmm. of them are sending it back. And the thing is, ask Bernie Sanders, if, if AOC is watching, go ask Bernie Sanders and other progressives that have twisted themselves into human pretzels, politically prostituted themselves. Yes, politically prostituted themselves. For Joe Biden and Hillary Clinton, go ask them when the, when the favor was returned. Bernie yeah. Sanders, during a pandemic at 79, literally went around the country for Joe Biden. He went around at 79 physically more than anyone else for Joe Biden. And what did Joe B Biden do? Right away, gave up on a $15 minimum wage, pulled back on $2,000 checks. I mean, it, it's, it, it's right in front of us. So to me, Jen, and I'd love your thoughts, the sin is not that Congresswoman AOC and Rashida Tlaib and Ayanna Presley and Ro Khanna and Pramila Jayapal and Cori Bush and the whole squad plus whatever you want to call it. The sin is not that they haven't won yet or that they haven't gotten Medicare for all yet or they haven't gotten a $15 minimum wage yet. That's not the ultimate thing that I have a problem with. The sin is you're not, you don't seem to be actually smartly fighting for it. That's what yeah. doesn't make sense to me. How are you going to get a $15 minimum wage if you're not right now saying to Joe Biden publicly in front of the cameras, dead on arrival, your infrastructure bill, dead on arrival, anything you want to do, dead on arrival. We, we stood by, we allowed you to gaslight us about the Senate parliamentarian in the COVID bill, and we voted for it, even though you abandoned your promise. But that's that. That's over. People have gotten the relief. And now- you want you want to achieve anything in this administration? Forget Joe Manchin. We have more power and we have more numbers than Joe Manchin. Joe Manchin is one person. The squad has eight or nine in the House. Bernie can pretty much do what Joe Manchin is doing. Bernie could shut down anything in the Senate. So I don't get what is the strategy. And if there is one, yeah. please tell us. Yeah. Well, and like, so before I was playing devil's advocate, so two AOCs like pretend answer that, oh, you know, I'm just trying to help them win. Your $5,000 is not going to swing anything. Your $5,000 is not going to make enough difference um, for you to give away money given in good faith from progressives that thought you were going, you AOC, that thought you were going to fight for Medicare for all the Green New Deal, et cetera. So why, as Jordan said, why is the squad not fighting? They have the numbers. Why are they cowering to these corporatist Democrats? Why are they cowering to Joe Biden? I don't understand what the squad is doing. I don't understand what AOC is doing if AOC's point is that people should be organizing and that that's what it's going that's what it's going to take we have to organize we have to organize that's what it's that's what we need you are in congress <laughs> like that's the goal right like you're in congress you are a lawmaker that's what people aspire to in order to make a difference you have organizers that are out there. You have people out there making a difference, but you AOC and you rest of squad, you are the people. You are in power right now, right here and now, and you do have the numbers. So stop talking a good game and do it. Hope you enjoyed that last video. Hop on over to statuscoup.com where you could sign up for our email list and become a member for as low as five to ten dollars a month. Membership is how we grow. That's statuscoup.com slash join. And remember, join our email list so we can grow the revolution with you. Oh, oh, oh.